Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the stream or the video if you're watching it on YouTube at some point during the day. So we're going to be starting day four of the slime experiments in development. And what we are going to do today is primarily think, depends on how long it takes, the main focus today is going to be creating the save and load mechanics for the game so that way when you play the game it's going to save your progress in the level, it's going to save your high scores, and when you load it's going to load in that high score information and your level progress so that way you can continue the game where you left off. Should be simple, right? Oh ho ho, not so much. Give me one second. I am going to change the title a little bit on the stream. So it's just a slime experiments day four, but we should go development day four. There we go. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is one thing that I thought of right as I was getting ready to start streaming. And I brought the, uh, the window for Unity up and I looked at some stuff and I was glancing at you know some some tabs that i could close Let, let's go to the monitor uh okay there we go it took a second to switch over and i was like what the hell is just a black screen i was looking at some tabs that i could close because we're going to need i think three different tabs for the or three uh three scripts for the saving and loading that's going to take place so i was thinking what level or what what not what level what scripts can i close right now that will allow me to get a little more space so things aren't getting pushed off into the sphere of nothingness. And I was looking at the conveyor belt script and I was like, oh, I could do that and whatnot because we've already finished that script and everything. And wait a sec. The total conveyor belt change. What happens to that value when we reset the game? Would the, uh, would the exit trigger just because we move? Does that count as exiting? I don't know. So we're going to test that out quick. We need to make sure that as we go into the conveyor belt, and if we were to reset for like if the slime were to touch us, that that value is going to revert. Otherwise, we're just going to get permanent speed debuffs, which is not great. So what we need to do is go to player move, and those are already public. Perfect. Go ahead and hit play. Wait a couple seconds for our slime to show up. and So we got to be quick about this, because otherwise we're just going to get pushed off the uh, thing here. So we're going to hit that, that, and reset level. Okay, let's hit escape real quick, and where am I at? Wait, not there. Anyway, it looks like the total conveyor change is there. Let, let's keep that open, keep an eye on that, because I might have gotten off the conveyor belt. I can't tell. It's happening too quick. The one thing that concerns me is that the uh, movable block has spawned there. Why? I'm gonna hit play there, and I can make this an active scene, and that might have been causing the issue. But first of all, let's also grab a couple of conveyor belts. And let's just make this longer, shall we? That way we'll have more time to hit the escape button. Um, movable block, we're gonna move up here. Also, I, I don't think we've checked what happens when you pause on the conveyor belt. Do you keep moving or do you just hang out? Let's try that now. So I'm gonna just hit escape and unresume. So I do just pause, that, that's good. I can take my time to hit reset level 
Let's look at the slime character right now. So we have two, four. We're going to reset and it goes away. Perfect. Okay. Let's go ahead and just cross that new line that I added just off to force stream off there. So does the, re the conveyor belt reset? No. Uh, it does reset, so it doesn't need anything else for it. Oh! Thank goodness. That could have been bad. So we would have had to do a lot of crazy stuff. Um, figure out how to change that. Actually, all we would have really had to do was in the... Uh, let's, let's unpause this and let's start off some actual music, shall we? Okay. All we would have had to do is in the level reset script, when we interact with stuff, we could just reset that value. Since it's a public value, we could just reset the um, conveyor belt change values here. So that would be simple. All right. There's one thing I want to do before we uh, get into the saving, and that is I want to make a cage object. So this particular um, not field, this this canvas size right here in the paint, it's going to be 64 by 64 because it needs to encapsulate um, the slime, right? So it has to be larger than 32 by 32 or however big the slime is. So what we're going to do to begin with, I want it to be kind of a rounded cage at the bottom. We're just going to kind of eyeball this. That's going to be the, the outer edge. Let's make that black. And I want to do another one over here. And kind of give it like a, uh, a bar look, right? So let's actually get like three. Like that. And I think one over for this one. Okay. Perfect. So, there's kind of the, the base. It's going to be thicker in the middle and the edges because we are, well, maybe we can go a little bit less thicker on the edges. Because as it's closer to you, it should look thicker, right? And so with that, we can just hit that key there. And I'm going to select this color. And we'll just go ahead and in-paint all of this. Perfect. So there's our, our uh, bottom of the cage that's going to be sitting on the ground. Let's add another layer. And what we need to do now is figure out how we are going to make the bars that go up to the top and connect. Well, we could make some smaller circle at the top and then just kind of connect things up to that. Um, that could kind of be what we do here. So let's make this a little bit, make it kind of smaller there. And then I think I can just do one of these guys over a little bit there, over a little bit there. So this isn't going to look the best, but it, it'll be passable as like, okay, yeah, that's a cage. It's going to have bars and stuff on it, right? So that's going to be the top, right? And now, let's add another layer. We're going to move this one up here. So here's the thing. We're going to have to do this in two parts with two different ones, right? Because we need a front and a back to it. So, thinking how we can do this real quick. Well, I think I can just real quick compress this. We're going to copy this, create a new thing, paste that in there. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so now we have two of these that we can use. And since this is going to be, I'm going to say the front one, we can go ahead and just come in here and pop that. Kind of erase some stuff. 
Let's make this uh, bigger of a brush so we don't have to sit here doing this all day. I think for the front, that would work. Now we have a nice and uh, easy way with it. For the top, it doesn't matter because the slime is not going to be able to get up there. So that's fine. We just need to make the sides of the cage now in order to do this. So instead of messing around with this background layer, I'm just going to go to the, the second one here. And we could make some curvy bars going up like that. Not that thick, though. Just one dense there. So we could make it so like the, the ball, all the, the, the bars kind of curve upward like this. Going from there, but then I'm gonna have to copy that exact thing, which is not gonna be great. I'm, just, I'm trying to copy this line, but it's not, it's not liking it. Also, that's probably not where I want that to go, so let's just get rid of that actually. Actually, I can just go all oh, and get rid of that. So doing this out of like a reference kind of sucks, gonna be honest. We want it to be mostly straight and then kind of curve upward like that. Then we can do another one and we'll just connect it right there. Do mostly like that and then like that. I think that'll be good for our little cage thing here. And we'll start another one from here and go here. We're just gonna wanna kind of mirror the uh, way here. Actually, you know what we can do? We can just do one side and then just copy and mirror it, because why would I do anything else, right? So, this would be basically the middle, right there. I'm not going to um, keep that line there. I actually want to do this so I can more easily get rid of it. So that's going to be our center line. Let's actually make it red. That way we just have that as a reference for the middle. Then we're going to want to make a bar like roughly here. And we'll try to do... Not there, there. Perfect. We want to make them as symmetrical as we can. Let's make a little bit of thicker bar there. And there, perfect. Now we just need to basically fill in. Well, I don't know why I actually made those two on the left. I guess it's fine. It can be flipped, it's fine, it's okay. So next we'll make another bar from, say here to here. We just want to do kind of the same thing here, make it a nice gradual lift. And we'll just do kind of here to here. There to there, and then we'll do one from here to up here. Kind of running out of space to put the bars at. That's okay. And I'm hoping when we actually get all these in, it's gonna look okay. I might be a little sick. Bar, there we go. Okay, so I think that will work. Now we just have to color it in and see if it actually does look good or not. So, boosh, boosh, boosh. Oh, there's a hole somewhere. Oh, yeah. Right, there's that little thing there. Let's grab a pencil. We'll just add a little dot right there. And here. No, let's not do that. Gonna have to make all of these because if we if we hide this, we can see how oh it doesn't connect at the bottom, so that's why the the thing bled. We'll just connect all these little things together so that it creates a little thing there. Then we're gonna have the gray part. Oops, not there, but here. Okay, now we can grab this and we can go ahead and paste it in to all of the little areas. And it shouldn't cause us any issues. Okay, so I think, forgot the top of that one. 
was gonna say, I think it looks okay. Um, just kind of cover up half. It kind of looks like a cage, right? I think that looks all right. Um, so let's go ahead. We will select this line. I'm gonna delete that. Then I'm just going to copy, paste, and then we can just go like, like that. We have a nice little page here. And I think what I could do as well to make this less like open and stuff is let's get just this tool here. Oh my god, I cannot keep my hands steady on the same. We'll just create a little box here. Oops. Oh my god. Keep your hands steady with the mouse. It's just possible you're drawn. Um, let's go ahead and just add a little hole there. We'll do that. So now the bars are connected by something and it's just, you know, sort of there. So this is going to be the front of our cage. Let's go ahead and flatten all these layers together. And we will go ahead and go... I'm going to move this off the main screen for a second. Just to make sure I don't have anything visible that's not. So cage, front. Okay. Perfect. So now... We want to make a back side for this. So basically we started here and here. So let's grab our eraser. Buff it up a little bit. We just want to erase this stuff to get rid of the front. Perfect. Okay. So that'll be the back ring that we have. And now we just need to get some bars as well here. So let's real quick, actually, let's copy this. I'm gonna create a couple of layers here. So that's how it's gonna look right now. So do I want this one to be the bottom? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Perfect. So let's go ahead and grab our two little pencils again and reduce the brush size once again to one. So where could like a good place be to go? I don't want too many of them to overlap or else it's going to cause some issues. So I think right here would be okay. That way I can make a bar like this. that one going up there and then I think just having kind of one in the middle would be good yeah like you said although I don't think the slime is ever going to be like going uh, past this bar back out of that Move that one over one okay I don't think I need to worry about too many other sidebars. If we have those, I think that's fine. So let's go ahead and just grab our, well, let's actually first of all disable that and then disable that. We have to make sure that these are enclosed. Okay, grab our bucket tool and we'll just fill these in. As you can tell, I am not an artist. Then we'll just go ahead and do that to make sure that these look good. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and uh, just move those. Put that one for a second. So copy this layer, paste this layer. And no, that's not what I want to do. Sorry. I need to get half of this. So we'll start here. Not half. Hmm, 
I guess we can do that. That and then where are we at? There we go. Okay, so I think that'll do for our back. That doesn't look too bad. Let's go ahead and first of all just delete the frontal layer. Close that down there. We have our our back. Oh, I guess we don't need the the loop at the top since that's also there, but. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save this. We're going to call this the cage back. Hmm. I'm thinking now, because the player is going to be able to go behind this. So maybe. Hmm. I can figure it out later. That's fine. Boop. Let's just get rid of that. All right. Go to our assets. Let's go ahead and bring these two pieces into here. So let's bring these two. Okay, there we go. Let's set these up to normal point and 32 pixels per unit. Whatever. All right. And then we'll make an object, an empty object called cage. Okay. And then we will want to take these, put them out here. So the cage front. We need that to be in the foreground. And the cage back, we want to be above the background. So let's go ahead and grab these two pieces, throw them in the cage. And now let's kind of just focus on this cage here. I'm curious, if I make this like 64 instead, Nope, that didn't do anything. I think it kind of made it worse. Made it smaller. All right, and let's get our enemy prefab little guy here. There he is, he's in the cage. You can kind of see him moving behind things. Perfect. So we'll just kind of set him there. All right, let's zoom in on this guy. All right, little slime. Front needs to be slid over one, I think. One little space here. There we go. Uh, maybe not. Well, actually, I can just set these two be zero, 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 and uh, zero, zero, zero. And there we go. Now they're going to line up by default anyway. Cool. All right. So now we have to make some. Uh, hitboxes for it, basically. Because we do not want the... slime to be able to you know, get out, or us to be able to get in. Actually, I need... Do I need a circle? I don't think a circle would be best. I need an ellipse. Get rid of that. Uh... Collider 2D. If I just do that, I can just do a capsule collider. I can make it horizontal. Now the trouble is, this might actually cause problems with the slime inside of it. So if I do that, that kind of creates the the bottom edge of the of the thing here, right? That's the bottom of the cage. So let's go ahead and grab the cage. Let's throw it on the, the enemy here. And we'll see if that causes problems or not. It did. You can see he slid up because he was in there. Okay. Um. Uh, 
Let's see, how do I want to do this? What was this? Oh, it was trying to reference the, uh, also there's a debug here, I can get rid of that. It was trying to reference this code, which it can't yet, because GM wasn't loaded at that particular moment in time. That's fine. Okay. So we do have the cage, but we also have this problem here. But I think we can get around this by instead of using a capsule collider, I can just use an edge collider. And this one's going to be a little bit tricky. So let's make like 10 points, not 102, thank God, Jesus Christ, 10 points. And so if I do this now, I can start just bringing things over to make a cage here. You know what, just, just give me one. Or I guess I need two to start with, don't I? Where's it at? Uh-oh. I screwed myself. Okay. Let's do it this way. I'll move this down here. And... I guess basically, yeah, I just want it to be kind of like this, so then I can make more points from the line here. This way it's not a, uh, like, enclosed area. It's just a line that goes around so that things inside and outside aren't able to get in. We'll test this with our movement to make sure that it's not messed up anywhere. Okay, so that's our circle. A little bit more complicated than it needs to be, I think, but we got it. So let's hit play now. And we can see I can't get in there. I, I can kind of jump up above there. So we might want to actually lower the uh, thing here. But we can also see that I go behind these bars, which is not ideal at all. Um, but really, I don't think we need to worry about the cage back for the slime inside, because we grab him. There's his hitbox. It's already kind of out there. Move him down here a little bit more. So he goes up a little bit. His sprite is not going to be able to move further than this. So he's never going to hit past that point, right? So it's, it's the perfect way to have this happen. Right. Anyway. Moving on to the cage. We want to edit the thing here a little more. So it's actually doing the outside edge. Instead of a, a middle edge. Do not want our slime to be able to interact with this area. Go. Okay. So that should be a better line for us. Let's go ahead and hit play and test it. Okay, so yeah, we can't go in the cage. We can go behind the cage now. Perfect. Love to see it. All right, so we can go out of there. And really, that's all that the cage needs to do. We don't need the cage to do anything else. It doesn't need to have any special scripts to it. It just needs to prevent the enemy from leaving and us from getting into it. So we can just go ahead and clear there, go to prefab, and we can drag the cage into here. 
and we can go ahead and delete the cage and delete the enemy slime there. Yeah! Okay. I'm just checking my document here. That was not one of the things we had, so whatever. Okay. So now we're going to start on number three, adding saving into the game. Ugh. Saving. Uh. Okay. So... We're going to be referencing three of my previous scripts. Specifically, unfuck the data, save manager, and save data. We're going to add these over to the side here. And I'll explain how they work. Um, so basically in the order of things, how they're going to be. We have save manager. This is basically where we're going to go ahead and call the save data or load data functions, which is then going to go through all of this and call these little uh, things for saving the various elements that we have of the game. Now, previously in, in my old game, I'm just a slime. We had all of this, which saved... Oh, let's open the save, it's easier. We needed to save our character stats for all of our characters. We needed to save the values of our game ma uh, manager controller. We needed to save the player's current location in the game, because that matters if they're at different save points or whatnot. We had to save all the quests and the quest, like, uh, place that it was at. We needed to save our event tracker, to save the events, like, did they defeat this enemy, or this enemy, or did they talk to this NPC, that kind of stuff. We had to save all of our items, all of our consumables, all of our equipment, all of our skills. It was a mess. Like, you never really understand what exactly happens when you save a game. You might think that's just, just yeah, you just copy every single thing in the game and then like save that to a thing and then you just like reload it but oh it's it's awful like at least the way i did it is awful there are a few different ways to save and load uh in unity um, this is the one that i found that worked that i understand easily enough some people have said that this is not secure but it's a single player game and it's not like it's saving personal data so I don't care if a person is like, I'm going to edit these stats so that I can make myself unstoppable. Like, do what you want, man. It's a single player game. So that's why I'm using this. Um, I've also heard that this one is secure or yada yada. So I don't know. It's just whatever. So anyway, you do all this and all these call all these things down here, which um, essentially if we look at, for example, saving the event, we open up a binary formatter. We open up a file to uh, the application persistent data path, which is like where the game saves and has all the saved data at on your desktop computer, whatever. Then we have a path, and then the file name is going to be events.dat. And then we create the file. Um, and then we take our event data, which is data, and we create a new thing of event data by passing in the game object, GM, event tracker. And then we serialize the data and pass it into the binary formatter, which I don't know what serialize exactly means, but it saves the data. Then we close the file so it does not stay open. And then loading is basically just the opposite. Open up the binary formatter, open up the file, take the file out of, uh, take the information out of the file into our data thing, deserialize it, and then close the information and then return the data so that the data in the, the load manager can be assigned via the, the unfuck the data script. So that's pretty much the long and short of it. So what is the, the um, event data data thing? Well, in save data, 
I have this lovely program, which is 2,000 lines of code here. And what it does, uh, it's probably easiest to show with position data, since that's the smallest. So it's going to take three values. That's what position data consists of, an X, a Y, and a Z value. Essentially, your character's coordinates in the world. And it passes in from here, if we look back up at the save data for um, save location. The save location calls uh, the save location function down here, which if we look at it, characters, save location, save location. Come on, where's that? Oh, it's basic data, isn't it? Yeah, save location. Okay, so save location is essentially getting our player, and then it passes into position data the player element. So it passes into this function right here, the player. And then it gets the player's y, x, and z coordinates and saves that. And then you can see the save here. We create a new position data with that information and that is the position. And then we go through here and save the position. Bam. That's essentially what we're going to do with all the information that we have. Uh, except it's going to be a lot easier because we have way less data. All we really have to worry about saving is the event tracker data. So, yeah. So, before we start writing code over there, we need to create our scripts. So let's go ahead and create C Sharp script called save manager. Also, I'm going to create a folder here for save scripts. If it decides it wants to let me type. There we go. Let's drag the save manager in here. Open up this. We'll create a new script called save data. Give it a second to load. It has to reload all the scripts or something. I don't know how you know it works there. But create another one. I'm also going to call this one Unfuck the Data. Just because I like the name of it. I could call it like Load Data, but uh, it's, that's less fun. I, I made it when I was like trying to figure out how exactly the uh, scripts work and stuff. And I was like, man, I hate loading. I'm just going to say screw it. It's, we're just going to unfuck the data. So that was fun. So we're going to open up all of these into the Unity window here. Lovely. And we don't need any of these in here. Also, I don't think we need to have them mono behavior. I'll check. Let's scroll up to the tippity top of these. So let's say public class mono behavior. I just want to make sure that's the case for all of them. Okay, so this one's just a class. It's not a model behavior. So in save data, we want to remove the colon model behavior from behind here and just call it save data. Easy. Um, I don't know if we need to use system, but we'll set that aside for now. So we'll hit save there. Hit save manager, we'll hit save there, and I'll put that out save there. So let's start with the save manager script because that's going to be what we basically need in order to do stuff. Yes, so we need to create a variable called path, which is going to be basically that. Um, actually, actually, I don't think we need to do that. I'm just going to do it for the sake of things though for the sake of consistency in my area. Then we want to do public bool save data. And return zero. Return true, sorry. Then we need to do a public bool load data. 
Uh, I don't think it's a bool, it's just a void, actually. There we go. Okay. So, in my previous game, I had these, this information here, the uh, slot and string for date. But since we don't have multiple slots for this game, since it's kind of just if you beat a level, congratulations, it's locked, um, we're not going to have, like, different save slots. So, what we need to do is, first of all, we need to grab et, et equals, and I'm just going to copy this one over here. This is why it helps to have a consistency with uh, how you name things, with it being like GM and event tracker stuff like that. That way, across projects, you can just copy code, and it's, it's just so lovely. And so, we're going to want to do a another public for save data as void. Yeah. A public void save uh, save ET. We'll just call it that. Save event tracker. So we want to do save et there. And I guess I can do et, 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 or whatever. OK. Right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Honestly, do we even need that? I don't think so. It's just easier to do that, I think. So let's go ahead and look at the load data now. So for load data, I don't have to worry about too much. I'm going to put a, a slash in the path, just like we have here. That way we don't have to worry about anything there. So we go through that. Load data is just going to do... Let's see. We have... Data. GM. GM. So for load data, we're going to need to do... ET, ET equals that. That way we're figuring out the event tracker again. And then uh, we're going to take a quick moment to go over here to do ET data. Uh, how did I do these again? Look at position data. So, wait a sec. Oh, right. Hold on. I don't need this public class save data. I just need to do serializable at the top here and then do public class ET data like that. And in here, we just do variables and then public et data et et is what we'll call that. So basically all of our event tracker, oops, all of our event tracker variables are gonna be basically restated in here. And then in here, we're going to assign the event tracker variables to here, essentially. So we're going to save this real quick. So that way, in here, we can go back to and do public et data. load et
and then eat. No, I think that's we don't need to do anything here, right? Do we? Do like that, and then we need to do a return et data here. Or we got to make a variable, I guess. Fine. So if we look down here at a load event, um, first of all, let's grab this code, and we're going to go ahead and do instead of event data, we want to do et data and et data. Convenient that's, that's the uh, one there. And then I'm going to rename events to et here for the event data. And then path is going to be that slash. So we can go persistent path slash and then that. Cool. So that's all we have to do for the load value because we're returning the et data here. So the load is finished. Quite simple enough for that. Okay. For the save, however, I'm going to copy this again. And we're going to take this to be ET data, ET data. And then we need to change this to be ET. And we need to change this to be ET. Go. Okay. So. I actually didn't pass anything into these, did I? That's fine. I can just remove this, however. I just have this be ET instead. So that works for me. Okay. Uh, ow. Did I use this anywhere? No. Well, I guess I do not need this. I just have to do that. Okay. Do I need that? Let's see how this goes again. Okay, so. First, we do the path. We get the GM. We then do that, which is why do I do load GM, GM there? I guess that doesn't matter. definition. Why do I use GM here? For no reason. Cool. You love seeing stuff in your code that you're like, why did I do this? <laughs> but okay. Anyway, that, that was confusing me. Like, why the heck was I doing that? Anyway, um, up here, we don't need this line of code then. We just need to do um, et data data equals, uh, let's call this et ET data, just for the sake of things, in case there is stuff that we also want to add later on for save. I don't think there is, but we're going to do load or load ET right there. And then we want to check if ET data does not equal null. Ah, fuck off. We want to actually load the data. So that's great. OK. So basically, we want to check here to see if there is data to load. Because if the game is never saved, there's never going to be any data to load, right? So if we try to load data that does not exist, we'll get an error, and the game won't load. Like, it, it actually just won't like start up to the point you can go to the main menu, I think. Um, so we need that there in order to check that, right? So once we are in here, what we want to do is create in this class, look over here, um, let's just do easiest one, position. So we want to create a public void unfuck et. We want to take et data data and pass it in here. 
Okay, so. What we do is then check if data does not equal null. We want to do this because we want to also double check again that this data is not null because it could potentially be if you were to typo the path name, which has happened previously for me, and I've been an idiot about that. And then we want to basically just reset everything. Um, so we need to do uh, et et equals, and I'm going to go ahead and just come over here again because I don't want to type all this out. That. So first we're going to get the event tracker um, use and do that. Wham bam. Okay. You know what? I was like, this is going to take hours. It's going to take the whole stream to do the save. But since it's so simple, we've actually done here in the next like 20 minutes or less. But let's go ahead and get uh, this open. So that's really all we do here. Okay, cool. So. Now that we have the save manager like this, we can do, um, we just need to do, right, we need to declare unfuck, of course. So um, we have unfuck the data, unfuck equals, okay. Okay, and so once we have that, we just go unfuck dot unfuck et and then pass in the et data and that's it. That's our load data completed. Let me just check through here. And yeah, at the end of this save manager, I, uh, is when I actually loaded stuff up. So that's why I have is loading false here and yada, yada, yada. Don't need that right now. None of that matters because of when we're going to actually be using the loading script. So we should be okay. Okay. Go ahead and hit save for this. So we have the save data. We create ET, we throw in the ET for save. It goes through this, it goes into the save data and it saves that data. We load, it does the opposite, turns either null or that, and we get that perfect. Cool. All right, so now, I think I can close these, but I'm not going to do it quite yet. I'm just going to move them aside. We can reference them if we need to. So let's grab everything from here. And we're just going to go ahead and paste them directly into save data. And... I actually don't think I need to initialize anything here. I just got to go like this. We can get rid of these long hash things. I don't think we even need to do this. We just got to do that. These. Go ahead and just shorten these up to make it nice and sweet and all that good jazz. Imagine how much time could be saved in making this game if I did not want to include a high score times for the player to look at. I wouldn't have to do all that. Okay. So here are our, 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 our things. We don't want any of these to be set as anything. Oops. We just want them to be initialized like this. because we don't care. We don't care what their values are by setting them to this, right? What we do want to do, however, 
and let me actually look over here. So, right, that's what we do. Okay, so we're going to do current level equals et dot current level. We're then going to do next level equals et dot next level, and new level time equals et dot new level time, and then highest level equals et highest level. And then music volume equals et music volume. Sound effect volume equals et. Oh, how dare you? Equals et sound effect volume. Then we want to take all the high scores. So level one top ten equals et level one top ten. Level two, level two, level three, level three, level four. Thank God for the predictive text, or else I would have to type all of these out every single time. And in fact, it might just be quicker to go for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then just do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, I missed four. We'll just call this one four, and then do 10, nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five. And I'm gonna copy four and paste it where it should be. There we go. And that's how the save data works. Easy, right? And over in this, the, the unpack the data, what we have to do is take ET, Oh my god. Um, I'm gonna throw this over here to my other monitor so I can reference all of these. Okay. So et dot current level equals data dot current level. Oh yes. Let me do et dot next level equals data dot next level. We do et dot new level time equals data new level time. Then we do et high oops et dot highest level equals data dot highest level. You can see how this is going, right? So et dot music et dot sound effect and then et dot level one equals data dot level one two three four five six seven eight nine ten three four five six seven eight nine ten ten Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right. With that, we have everything ready to save and load our current progress. And hold on, there's one thing I need to make sure of. Can you save lists? I forgot. You can. Okay, thank God. <gasps> There's some things you cannot save, like game objects and stuff like that. So it's very messy if you uh, have a lot of stuff. Like, I would want to save, like, items, for example. But well, look, look how this item has to be saved, first of all. So my items in my uh, RPG game, they're essentially like, um, what, what were they called again? They're called uh, like scriptable objects. And you cannot save scriptable objects. In the scriptable object, it has all the information about the item. It has how many you have. It has how much healing it does, the name of the item, et cetera, et cetera, and all that. But you cannot save that. So instead, I take the list of the consumable, pass it in here, and then for each of these, I just save the name, essentially. And then look what I have to do to get the items. 
it, it takes over a hundred lines of code to do this. So for the consumables, we have to do this. So we have to, first of all, find our inventory script because our inventory script houses all of our items and stuff. We then need to go through all of our consumables and check if the consumable the item name is not equal null. If it is not null, then we want to change the length of that item to be the count, and then we go through here and watch this is just getting the length of the list. And then over here we get the variable for the list. And then we check the list, make sure it's not zero, which means we have something to load, which means we then have to go through this for loop and we gotta search each consumable in the consumable list and check to see if the item name is equal to the name that we saved. And if it is, then we have to go through this, instantiate one of the items. We have to set that name equal to that name. And then we have to add the consumable to our consumable list. It's just a mess. Essentially, I have to make it so that the game knows somewhere these are all the possible items. And then these are the names of the saved items. And then we're comparing the list of the saved names to the list of known items. And then if the item name is in the known items list, it adds that item and then the amount that it has. It's just a huge like step that we have to take to do all this stuff. And you can't just instantiate you have to change the name as well or else it'll start with a a, a clone behind it uh, it'll be like movable block parentheses clone if you just instantiate an object and don't name it so that's a whole other thing so with this i don't think i need my things here anymore so bye um and then we can take the save data and put it over here <laughs> Okay, I think this is everything we need to do for our saving scripts right now. Of course, we do need to add all of the different high scores, which I could do now. It could potentially be easy just to do this one here, because um, then we can just go two, 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 thirty, and then. I can go three, 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 and four for forty. And we can go four, 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 four. And then fifty, and it's already done. Look at that! Woo! Yeah. That's all fifty of our high score levels. We can just minimize there. Of course, we haven't added them to the event tracker, so I can't exactly just do that real quick like. But you know, while we're at it, screw it. Maybe I can just do this real quick and easy like I did the other one. But of course, it is there a like an auto like collapse where I can just like collapse all of these without having to do this? It'd be really nice if there was. Oh, can I just click there and I just double click? Okay, cool. So that's uh, 20, 30, 40, and then 50. Okay. Let's scroll to the top. This will be easier, I think, if I'm at the top of it. So, double click, double click, double click, double click. Gonna take a minute. <laughs> or at least then we'll have all the levels made right in the event tracker. Everything will be fine. So let's go 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. 
41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. And there we're done. Honestly, I think the uh, this part was what was making me be like, oh my god, this is going to take forever. So... We win. Okay. That's the event tracker there, which means we can go here and do the same thing. So we added all those in, right? Yeah. So we just have to grab all of these. Ho, ho, ho. One. That's 20. No, that's 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay. <laughs> now we've got to remember where we're at. So 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. and 50. Why are these giving me errors? Does not exist in the current context. Let's set that aside for now. And we'll just do this number as well. Jesus Christ. That was quick. Um, did I forget to do the tens? I did. That's on me, not my bad. Man, I got so if you're not aware of what I'm doing to like go down that fast, I'm hitting the down arrow and the left arrow on my keyboard, just like bam, 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 bam. Of course, it, it's, it's different because I'm not adding a new character, but see the cursor move down. That's, that's what I'm doing to add all that, so yay. All right. Um, I'm going to add a new region. Um, saved scores just that way we can also clean up this little area so we just have to worry about that stuff we don't have to worry about much control alt what does control alt do I don't know what control alt does It doesn't seem to be doing anything if I'm... I don't know. Anyway, let's just save that. Okay. Control-Alt plus your up-down arrows when you edit multiple times. But multiple times. So if I hold my Control-Alt and down, I'm holding control and all plus my down arrows and hold my up and down arrows and that's what it does. It just opens up that little thing in the upper right. It might not like this. I don't know. In a visual studio. So that's all it does there. Okay. Yeah, this is Visual Studio. It's nicer because it's got like colors and stuff. I don't know. I like Visual Studio. It's fine. My way works. So, get my fingers some exercise. So now we need to repeat the process for unfuck the data as well. Huzzah! So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then I just need to figure out where the heck we're at here. So that's one. Mm. 
Oops. Ah, fingers. God damn it. Okay. Two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 and then five. Okay. So just broadly looking over, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and uh not that. Excuse me? What hair do I have? Oh right there. It did create. Okay, so we're gonna do a region. High scores. Create another one down here called high scores with end region there. Bam. And then I can close all those up and make everything look neater. Nice. Okay. So with that, all of our save stuff is finished. Um need to add more ET into the thing. Alt, Shift, and then arrows. Oh yeah, it, it selects multiple rows, but I don't know. If I were to grab this. I guess, yeah. That works. You can just hold Alt, Shift, select the multiple rows of that column and then do that. Of course, I can still only do it at like, uh, like nine at a time, because then I would have to do uh, two. But yeah, that works. I would say either way, the, the amount of time saved is you know, just a couple of seconds as how fast I was changing these, but yeah, that works. Okay. So, we have our saving, more or less. We want to add saving into the game on the finish level. Finish level script, line 34, right here. Okay. So what we want to do here is, I guess we want to do SM, or Save manager, save manager. I'm gonna call SM right here. And we want to do SM dot. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's just save data. SM dot save data. Yeah, thanks for the. Uh, for pointing that out. That will come in handy in the future if I need to do more of those, but I honestly, for this game, I don't see me needing to do that. You never know, though. You never know. Good call, Ryle. Good call. All right. So this will save our data. But... But, I need, where is my save point script? Is it map and scene? Yes, right there. So in my save point script, if we get out of all this stuff, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Save game. Okay. And then this is what we do. Slave, save slot one. Go to this code. 
So this is what I want right here. Let's move this over. Okay. So in I'm just a slime, we have this code here, which Um, right here, right, okay. Minimize that so I can see this stuff together. So what happens in my other game is we take our thing here, we save this information, we want to get the date, character name, and whatnot, so that way we can assign the save slot to have the date and the character name, so that way you can keep track of what's save is what's save when you're playing the game. And we pop open a save screen panel that says saving. And then we start a code routine that waits until save data returns a true value, which means a save has been completed. And then we change the status of the, uh, the status panel, which is like saving dot dot dot, it'll change to save completed. And then an OK button appears, which lets you close out of the save menu. So we want to do something similar. So instead of doing this here, what we want to do is I'm going to just I hit home, damn it. Hold on. Ugh. Cut that. Save progress and delete the old level. So, rather than wait for seconds here, we want to do wait until and then that, that, and that. Because what this will do is it will uh, save our data here. And until the save is finished, it will not let us destroy the game, essentially, right? So it'll, uh, eh, eh. What it's going to do is it's going to save the game, and then only when it returns true that the game has been saved will it destroy this level and progress the game that way we are sure that it's saved so the player can't just hit like alt f4 or um uh, hit escape and then exit the game right there right so let me just double check this so complete level end level what do we call end level at? We turn on GM is loading. Perfect. That's what we want to do. All right. And then once the is loading panel is up, it doesn't matter how long we take to destroy the level as long as it finishes saving in time. Okay. Excellent. So that is what we want to do there. And then... That is the saving the level finished. Okay. And we can go and remove that there. Um, and saving into the game has been finished. Okay, because that should be the only time that the game saves is when you finish a level. That's when it will save. Although, let me check here quick. Um, I just thought of something. What if they open up a previous level in the level selector and beat that level? Let me look and see what happens. So we're going to do new level time equals that. We're going to check the high scores. When do I change the 
value of the furthest level. This value here. Where, where is it at? Event tracker, right? Not GM. Uh, highest level. When do I change that? I think I can just search Control F highest level. Do I not do it in here? Is it on load? Level script. Let's see. ET. Maybe I did the logic here, because yeah, it looks like I'm manipulating the thing here. So current level equals level name. If ET highest level is less than the level number, then that. Okay, perfect. I already did it. Never mind. I am a genius beyond my time. Okay, so. Need to add more high scores to finish level. Okay, that's fine. But we also need to do the loading. We need to determine where loading happens. So we're probably gonna wanna do it in the main menu script. Potentially. So, the first two scripts that are going to wake up are the GM script and the main menu script, because they're always going to be active in the game, right? So, first of all, we need to add the save manager script here, I think because we need to reference the save manager script sometimes. Right, that's how we had this laid out here. Where did I... Oh, did I not specify where the save script was here? Good, good catch me, good catch. Okay, so just in on awake, we just need to basically copy this. SM, and then save manager. Okay. So the question for loading is, do I want the loading to happen with the main menu or with GM? Or, or so the save manager when we load data it relies on having unfuck the data and it relies on having the event tracker so That's the question, in it? Damn, okay, um... Maybe I do slide it into the, the GM script. But what order do they load in? Does it load GM, and then ET, and then time, and then save manager? Is that in the order that they load? I never, I never know. You know? Because basically, we need to load the save, or have the save manager load the data after the GM and the ET scripts load in. And after the main menu loads in as well. Actually, it has to be the main menu script because it has to manipulate the... It has to manipulate these two buttons. So that's where it's going to be. Let's... Unload the main menu. And just go to the main menu script. Okay, cool. So, on awake, we need to add a save manager SM. We then need to add another one here. Save manager and SM. There we go. And so, after all that stuff gets set up, 
we when we save when we load data and we call the load data we first check if it's null yeah so all we have to do is call load data and then we're done okay cool so we just want to do yeah because we have to do it before here then those are set should i have a boolean or Yes. For the save manager, we're going to want to do a bool. Load data and then return true. Okay. So we want to do sm.load data. Actually, that's not where we want it. Never mind. But I e numerator. Um, load the data as well. I'll call this, and then here I want to grab this line, and instead of save data, we just want to go load data, and after this. We want this to happen. So then we want to do start coroutine, load the data, like that. So what this will do is we wait a couple of seconds, or the second, the fraction of a second we need to have the GM and the SM and all that good stuff load. And then we start a coroutine called load the data, which will load our data and then after the load of data has returned true which means it's finished going through this it will then check to see if next level has been updated if next level does not equal the parentheses which is blank null nothing and if highest level greater than one it's going to set those buttons to be active that's what's going to happen so, perfect. That should be all we have to do for this. Um, I'm going to make a note. No. Loading data happens in main menu script line 73 and then checks before activating the continue slash level select buttons. Okay, and then saving data happens in the finish level script line line 46 where it waits to destroy the level before turning off Waits to destroy the level until save complete. We'll call it fine. Just to keep note and track of where we are saving and loading, those are currently the only two places that we are doing either. Also, the reason that we're doing destroy after we set is loading to false is because if we destroy it first, is loading will never happen because as soon as it gets destroyed it stops executing code 
which means that this would never happen if it was after that. Just FYI. Okay. So, before we continue onward, um, I think what we're going to do next is add more high score cases just to get that out of here. Um, make it nice and simple. But before we do that, I'm going to go to the bathroom and stretch a bit. So, I encourage you all to do the same if you haven't gotten up for a while. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I think before we move on, I might want to explain something here. And you might be curious why I've been like, oh, I don't want to do saving, saving sucks. This is awful. This is going to be the worst thing. And why I kind of was putting it off until right now. Well, let me show you what my event tracker looked like 
in the RPG game. And you might understand. Here's the event tracker for my RPG game. And it is 800 lines of nothing but Boolean values. Sometimes integers, but mostly Boolean values that all had to be saved, that all required lines of code in the save manager, in the save data, and in the unfuck the data options. All 800s of these correspond to various things. We have the music sound effect volume, we have the uh, enemy encounter rate, we have the amount of enemies you're going to see, we have the cooldown for how often you're going to get a random enemy to show up, we have all the uh, crystals that you can pick up that will give you new spells and stuff. Every single enemy and every single chest that is on the map that you interact with, if you kill an enemy on the map, we need to mark it as dead so it doesn't just respawn. If you open up a chest, we need to mark that one as opened because if you open one, we don't want to you know, be able to be opened again, otherwise that'd be just exploiting that. And then for like each um, quest thing, there's all these different carrots you can pick up for the carrot collection quest. There is all these wolves that you have to kill for quests and stuff. And then of course, every NPC also has an, is this character dead marker? Because if you kill an NPC while you're on the absorption path, we don't want them to respawn. We have to kill all of them, all this different stuff. Not only that, but down, let's see, where did I put all of it? So all these dialogue options that like, as you're walking through the world, the NPCs that you're, you're allied with or the enemies or whatever, they'll occasionally say stuff without you talking to them. And all of those triggers required a true false to know if they triggered or not. That way they wouldn't keep triggering if you went over them multiple times. So basically anything you do in the game that only wants to happen once, I had to make a event tracker value for, right? So it got out of hand real quick. That's why there's 800 lines here. These are all the dialogue things, which itself is almost 100, but yeah. And that's just like one part of the saving that happened, right? Because in addition to that, like you saw previously, there's also the items that have to be saved and just the non-true-false values that all had to be saved. It was crazy. I can't believe I managed to pull it off. But like, yeah. Also, probably the, the trauma of trying to figure out how to save for the first time ever in making a game, that was crazy. Trying to figure that all out, so like being like, okay, I'll use this save method, and then it turned out to not work properly, or I did something wrong, and all of a sudden something wasn't saving or loading properly when I was doing stuff and playtesting, and I was like, why does this not work? It was uh, messed up. Fun fact, um, the equipment and skills, if we look at my save script here for it, I think it's in Save Manager. So I have the equipment commented out, and I actually combined it with skills. Because if you look here, I have pathlocation.dat as the save name, and the same for this one too. But if we look at the save data stuff here, Current save equipment player, or in save skills player, rabbit player, and the string that is taking in is the location. So they were being named the same thing, which means that every time 
I was saying the equipment, it was then being overwritten by the skills. So none of the equipment was being saved, and I just could not figure out why until, like, I think I probably put like two hours of work into trying to figure out why this equipment was not saving. And then I finally saw that the paths were called the same thing. I was so upset. I was like, oh my god. It was bad. Real bad. But we got past it. Also, figuring out how to save was also the reason why my first game that I built from scratch, um, Lime Evolution does not feature saving at all. Originally, I had planned to have some sort of like progression system where you like uh, use the monster cores you get by defeating enemies and use those in like in a shop to buy things and then you save like the progression there. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to save because when I tried to implement it, the game just would not work. Like, it wouldn't even get to the menu screen. And so I was like, oh, well, uh, We'll just not save then. That's how that worked out. So, fun times. All right. With that little bit of nostalgia stuff out of the way and whatnot, let's focus on number two. Adding more high scores to the finished level script equal to the number of levels. Also need to add more ET in the main menu script. And in the main menu script for how to have this level first we'll just done need to finish. So I think we can remove in ET, because ET is now done up to 50. Let's also make a note here saying five worlds, 10 levels each is currently planned. If any change, we need to edit the event tracker and other scripts that use high scores. Smiley face. As well as the level select. Okay, excellent. So, let's look at the main menu script. So it says I need to add more in the main menu script. Where do I do that? Did I mention where? Of course not. Oh wait, it says in highlight this level. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I just have a copy this. And then paste that here. So this is going to be 11 now. Trial. This is where it's going to come in handy now. Alt shift. Bam. Bam. I could even go further, but then there's a gap here. That's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. So there's 13. Here's 14. 15. This is so much easier now that I don't have to uh, do a bunch more extra work. Well, thank you, Ryle. It's really helpful to know I can just Alt-Shift, use the down arrow, hit one. Although the one thing, tens. Ah, those jerks. Okay, so 20 and 20. All right. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and just paste all of these to where they need to go. We can just go down and uh, 
do them off, so... 20... Wait. We say 22. Oops. I was holding shift. Not all as well. There we go. So we'll just make the zero. Good catch, me. Okay. Now we do the 30s, or 20. Again, I'm holding shift. I'm so used to holding the right shift as I'm pressing on the down arrow for like stuff like that. But it's taking some good. So 21. That was odd. Well, I guess I can just keep pressing down and... Oh, that's weird. So I have to click off and then do stuff. Okay. There's 33. Here's 24. Here's 25. 26. I didn't hit the two there. <laughs> Let's try something out here real quick. What happens if I let go of all or hit off again? Hmm. I was hoping I could like Pause it. Oops, that was one. So I didn't have to keep clicking on and off. I could just kind of go down as far as I needed to go. But, oops, I hit Windows Keep. And here is 30. Okay. Good thing to note is uh, I just deleted all the zeros apparently. Oh my god, that's what it was. Okay, I understand why 2 was there now. So, if you do that, and you move over, it uh, follows. Yeah, okay. This one should be 40, though. No, that one should be 30. What am I doing? God, I am just out of it right now. Okay, next is 30. 31, 39 and 40. Okay. Now for the 40s. Ha. 41. Yeah, I didn't think something looked off for some reason. I was like, why does the line look different? Wait, what? Oh no, that's the same for everything. Yep, everywhere is after a... Uh... I was wondering why everything lined up so nicely except for the last one. I'll, I'll change that later. Let's just worry about one thing at a time. It, it's much easier to do this when they're all lined up. So... 
Maybe it was actually a blessing that there was a typo there. Oh, I can't. Okay. Ah! Buttons! Stop! Oh, my hands. My hands, my hands, my hands. It betrayed me. I thought I just saw something off. Maybe I did not, though. Okay. Gonna have to fix all these now. Which is gonna be a lot harder since it's just one line and I can't really do much about that. That one I already fixed. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. are not good. How did these get like to be nine? What did I do? Oh, I know what I did. Never mind. Shame it wasn't like the zero or something, because that would be just so much easier to add a one in front of. Ah, the tedium. This is just so much fun. Welcome to programming, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> One mistake costs you like minutes of work. So that means this whole line. Bye bye. Okay. That is care of the main menu high scores. Now we have the finished level script. Uh, I need to add more high score cases. So. Where is that at? Check high scores. Oh my fucking god, this is going to be annoying. Damn. Hmm. So every time I want to change these. I'm gonna have to change that number, that number, that number, that number. I'm pretty sure this number, that number.
Maybe not these. <coughs> yeah, since that's being stated here, I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna remove these so I don't get confused. Think about how long it's going to take. Also, it seems I've uh, triggered my Japanese keyboard. Okay. Oh, by the gods! Okay. Remember line 220. That's five. There's ten. Might as well edit this stuff here. Although, I might have a way to make this go by faster. Now that I'm thinking about it. For now, let's just fix this. Let's just make absolute certain that we have these ones correct. Down here, I did. And last, we have six. Then the first ten will be done. Okay. First ten are done. Now, the easiest thing to do, I think, would be to copy paste one four more times. So, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. And now we have a bunch of errors and around 1,500 lines of code. That's fine. Let's go back up and slowly change the cases to what they should be. We'll worry about the rest in a moment. Eight. Forty-seven. Forty-six. Forty-five. Forty-three. Forty-two. Forty-one. Forty. 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31 using the one from before, 30, 29, 
19. Oh my god, I can actually use the ones. 8, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10? I, did I miss one somewhere? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, I missed 44. Just taking the damn line. Okay, and to make things easier, I'm just gonna copy this one. Cut it. And we're gonna go down to 44. Meow. And paste it here so I don't have to do other stuff. So now comes the part that I think I can make easy. Because I copied one, for every single one after this point. I can do a control F for level one top 10. And I can then replace that with level 11 top 10, right up here, right? And I can just go boosh, 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 then change 11 up here to 12 and go boop, 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 boop. And then 13, boop, 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 boop. 14, boop, 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 boop. 15, boop, 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 boop. 16, boop, 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 boop. 17, boop, 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 boop. 18, boop, 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 boop. And then 19. So we can go 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And this is why I had to move 44 down rather than keeping it where it was. Um, 25, 26. 27, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. And we're done. That took about eight minutes from start to finish. It would have taken a lot longer if I would have had to seriously go to each, like one of these with my mouse, backspace, type the number, Go to the next one. It would have taken like 15 to 30 minutes, maybe even longer. Depends on how quickly I could have moved, but thanks to the uh, Control F find replace feature, we got it done nice and quick. So, I think we need to do two. Finished. That means the only thing we have left on our to-do list is to make a bunch of levels. Hmm. All right. So I think we're done looking at our script for a while. We can actually get into the game. Couldn't all of this be a function?
I mean, it could be, but I think I would still need to use like a switch case in the function. I mean, I could. The thing is, and maybe there is a way to do it, and I'm just, I just don't know. The thing is, I have to reference this particular variable. And in order to do that, I have to have that there. Unless there's like a way to make like dummy variables. So it's like something else, but I don't know. Because this number has to be, you have to take this number and you also have to assign to this number. So. Set it in as an argument. I've been out of the programming game for a long time, so I don't exactly remember what that means. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Find value as method parameter. Oh, do you mean make a method and then take the value of like whatever the hell it is and pass it in as like okay, hold on. I, I think I got it. Never mind. I was just being stupid. My brain was like, "What the fuck's an argument? I don't know what an argument is, even though I've been using them this whole time." Hold on. Let me go to the back end here. What you're saying. And yeah, you're fine. Is uh, outside of here, I could make a private void do something. And then in here, take a, uh, I think it's a list of strings. And then score list, for example, like that. And then rather than having all of this here, instead of the four each, well, I would still need the four each, um, but I could just, in the case, I could just do something and then um, et dot level 50 top 10, just like that, and then have all this stuff be in the method, right? So, could I do that? God, the thing is, I don't know. Does passing this in mean you can just directly manipulate it? Like if I do this stuff here and I were to change like if I went score list zero equals high, for example, would that change ET top 50 zero? Hmm. I just don't remember how it works. I was thinking if you send something in that's kind of like a, it's not a, I think it could. Although it's already all written and it's not like this stuff's gonna happen multiple times anyway. So yeah, you could do it that way, I think. However, since I already have it all written, changing it to that would be kind of pointless, I think. Cause it'd be doing the exact same thing in all this stuff. I'd still have to go through the switch case to find which thing to pass into it, I believe. So essentially all that would be doing would be moving this code from here to here and making it a generic variable, which arguably, if I would not have already done all the work, that would be a much better solution than having to type out everything multiple times. Yeah. True, I could get rid of like hundreds of lines of code, but I don't think when the program's running that matters because it doesn't need to go through every single line of this code, for example, if like it's 49 
the case switch, it's just going to go case, find 49, go directly to this one, not even read all of this code, because it's only going to care about the case thing. It's going to just check all the cases, which it would do anyway if I had the method in place and whatnot. For readability and for like just seeing things easier, you being like, okay, yeah, this goes there, that goes there. And to shorten up the code so you don't have to scroll down as far, yeah, 100%. That'd be better to do. And I don't know if I was working for a huge company or something and they were paying me to do this, I would rewrite it just because I'm getting paid and, you know, I have all the time in the world because I'm just making that bank, right? But I'm not getting paid. I'm just doing this myself, <laughs> right? So it kind of depends upon what you want to do. Like, I could go back and rewrite it, but I don't think it's going to do anything for the program if I do it now. It's just going to make time that I have to work on it. A very fair point. For those of you watching out here, you could implement that. Just uh, make a method in each one of these and just replace that down there. So take this information, put it into a method. And each one of these, et, yada, 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 just have that be a variable. And then you'll pass in, like it was here before, like do something. And you'll pass in whatever this one was. So like uh, the et50 goes here instead. And all of these would be like, hell, you could just have them all be x, for example, like an x variable, right? And that, that's what uh, Ryle is saying you could do. And you would eliminate like, this amount of code times 49, so that is like, what? Five, or eight minus five would be 30 lines of code times 49, which is 30 times 49. No, hold on. That's not right, because that's 1470, which is all the lines that are here. <clears throat> Let's actually do math here. So 1481 minus 1456 gives us 25, then times 49 times. Okay, 100, or not 100, 1225 is how many lines would it be reduced by? Yeah, true, true. I just don't like doing math in my head and stuff. I like using the calculator because it's easier. But yeah, fair point. That would reduce it a hell of a lot. But now I'm okay with how it is. Let me reopen these uh, things here. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's start making our first level. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove everything out of here. Pressure plate, the mobile blocks, the conveyor belts, the block one spawn, uh, this conveyor belt here, just delete all that. Pitfall, delete. Let's move the, the end level. That will always be in a level, so let's keep that. And Let's throw that. We're just going to put that in the middle for right now. We're going to put it at zero, zero. Spawn point, we're also going to put it at zero, zero. We're also going to remove this hitbox. We don't need a hitbox for that. But yeah, very fair point. Very fair point. Also, like I said, I'm still like learning Unity and whatnot. So I don't know. Maybe having all those lines of code does slow the program down, down somehow. But I feel like it would be, if it does get slowed down, it would be like a very minuscule amount, like milliseconds, which they do add up over time, but I don't know. I do not know. I do not have much knowledge of optimization and stuff like that. I just know how to basically make the game go do thing stuff. Yeah, that's all. Okay, so before we actually create our game, or our first level. We want to go ahead and just grab this and we're going to erase all the tiles, just everything on the board here. 
And what we need to do is, first of all, create a prefab for our level layout. That way, we don't have to keep making it every time. So we're going to remove that, remove that. We're going to keep the player in there. We're going to keep the spawn point in there. Um, we're going to remove that value. We're going to remove the pressure plates, remove the levers from here, remove the pitfalls from there. And nothing else here matters. So we're always going to have a spawn point. The slime character and the spawn point are going to matter for that. The end level script, that's good. Spawn point doesn't have anything else on it. Tile map is now empty. Excellent. All right, we're going to take this into our prefab. And I'm just going to call this level prefab, just so it has a different name. I'll just copy this down to here. And of course, it's going to be blank. But that's all right. And then we can come up here, go to prefab, unpack, which makes it no longer a prefab. And I can remove the prefab name and just put level one. Um, let's call it level 1-1 just for the, for the sake of things. Um, level number is going to be 1. Level name will be 1-1. And we're off. OK. So this one is going to be basically the, the tutorial, kind of. It's going to get the player knowing what they're doing. So we're going to, of course, just want to grab our tile map here and just create a very simple layout. Um, I need to select that and then select this. Why? Huh? Why is it being weird? What are you doing? Oh, because I don't have the right. <clears throat> I didn't have the brush selected. I'm smart, I swear. OK. Let's make the corners first. Simple enough. Then we'll make the sides of it here. We're just going to make a square or a rectangle for now. I should select this one so I can make straight lines. OK, so we have our rectangular little box. We also need to have and exit. So we're going to grab this one, and we're just going to dock it right in the middle. That'll be the exit. Now, I also want, I don't want the player to just walk past everything and just go straight to the exit. Um, or do I? Maybe I want 1-1 one, one to just be, go to the exit, so the player knows, hey, uh, all you have to do is leave. That's all you have to do. But maybe I add a little bit extra some stuff here. So what if I add something like this, that, that. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So the thing here is these lines don't match up, which upsets me. I, I need to make, or could I just, no, I can't do that because that one doesn't match there either. Yeah, we might take a second and add some new stuff here to our, uh, our little spreadsheet. Because honestly, sometimes you just, you just don't know what pieces you need until you're actually building something, right? Like, even the, the artist I commissioned for some of the sprite work uh, for my I'm Just a Slime game even he didn't realize all the stuff that I would need. Uh, we're going to resize the canvas. I think I want to add three more rows, at least to the right. So that would be 129 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32. So we want 288 for the width. And we'll just hit OK. And we can grab that and just delete that to make it transparent. OK. So the things we need right now, we basically just need to grab 
this whole area, which should be 96 by 96. We need to throw this over here. There we go. We need to make this actually have some decent corners for us. All right. So maybe I make two of these. Yeah. Let's make two. We'll see why in a moment. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and grab our color here. And this one, we're going to let's zoom in a little bit. Let's let's focus on this. Okay, so we basically want to have a corner piece that's kind of rounded there. We go down to here and over to here. And we want to do the same thing up to this area. Right like that. And just do that to the, all the corner pieces here. There we go. Not that corner. Not the actual corner, just the, uh, the inside edges of them. Oops. Unsteady hands. And then up here. There we go. Okay, so that will make it so that the uh, things can match up. And we also will want to grab interior color because we're going to have to make this nice and flat like that. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'll need these other pieces that are in the middle, but I might as well keep them just in case. It could come in handy, you know? Like, if I want to link up some other pieces, maybe? Should be all those nice and oop. Actually, didn't cut off directly there. there no. Okay. So now we have some nice corner pieces that have nice beveled edges right there. It's face palming, sorry. And that way, these I can just get some of the corner pieces there and just smack them right in the middle. Although what I could do is I could just take these chunks and paste them into here, and that would in essence, like, fix some stuff. I would just make it a nice, like, panel for me, I guess. And then this one, what do I want to do with this one? We have, if we're looking here, basically the the corner pieces will work for this, because then I can just put down a a bottom one here. Then I can put the line one there and that one here, and that way it'll form a nice little like uh, wall chunk like that, right? What else would I be lacking here? So if I wanted to have like wall kind of like that where we have oops didn't want to drag that where we have kind of like a, a little gap there I don't really have anything to sort of go sideways so maybe we make a like diagonal that can connect these together so let's first start out by grabbing a 32 by 32 area here, a 33 by 32. What chunk do I have that's not supposed to be grabbed there? 
That's 31. That's 32, right? No, right there. That's uh, still 31. There we go. Okay. We're just going to delete that. We're going to do that the same over on these other ones as well. 32 by 32, delete. That way I have a better, like, way to... Create a diagonal area between those, right? Perfect. Okay. So uh, now we just got to make some lines and three width. Let's copy this color. And if I just go from here to here. Doing that so it's a nice sharp line. Mm. No, remove that. Mm. All right, I shouldn't be going directly from. Something like that could work. Let's just focus in on this point. And then if I just use the pencil tool to kind of fill in gaps here, maybe... Does that look better? Nah, I think it looks fine like that. And then if I grab this color, if I paint in that, I can kind of see these little chunks here don't look great. Now let's zoom out and see how that looks. Not bad. It looks a little thick compared to everything else. Um, so I might actually... I wish I could just, like... Remove stuff. <laughs> Can I just... If I hit Z a couple of times here... Oops, uh, redo that. Let's change the thickness to two. That looked better. That might actually look better like this. Let's give it a check little bit of extra stuff here and here and there and there and if we zoom out looks better i think i think then let's go ahead and we will copy this and we're going to go ahead and just paste it over into this area That way we have some uh, corner pieces to work with as well. Make sure we don't overlap, because that would cause some issues in itself. There we go. All right, so now we have kind of a, a nice little wall, kind of a kid corner, which is perfect. Or diagonal, I guess. Is there anything else that I want to add? You know what, I am. I'm, I'm gonna edit this stuff real quick. I really do not like having these like this. I wanna be able to like really easily just know, okay, this is the left one, because otherwise I have to keep tapping on them over here. It's just annoying. This should be 32, 32 for the top one. Gotta make sure I line it up nice and good there. Oops, that's going too high. This should be 32 by 32, yep. All right. And there you go. And then we just do the bottom one. I think that's 
That's it, yeah. There we go. And paste and slap this guy right there. All right. Okay. Also, I think the doors were looking a little bit iffy previously. So I think what I could do is add like a bar going through them to make them a little more visible. Because otherwise the, the black on the current background does not necessarily look great. Ah, cop on steady hand. There we go. So now it's a little more clear that there's something there. Uh, right. Okay. I think that looks good. Anything else that I need? Hmm. Kind of, yes, actually. But first... Let's move this stuff over. Not there. There we go. Cut, and we'll just go ahead and throw this stuff over here to make some more room. I won't be able to do that to this side, but that's okay. I can at least slide this one over, though. Oops, that's zooming out. Okay. I think it's right here. Nope, one more up. There, one more up. There. And then all the way down here. There we go. Yes. I'll just slide this over to hit that. Okay. So I need two more 32 cubes, I think. So we're currently at. 64 plus this size plus 288 would give me 352. There we go once again, we're gonna go ahead and just click that, and we're once again gonna copy this big chunker here. Copy. And we're going to throw it over here. Okay. Perfect. Mm. Okay. So for this one, what I want to do is what do I want? I had a thought about it and then I was like, totally forgot. Shit. Um, so if I would ever want to do something like this, where I have kind of like a, a lip going up, and then it kind of flattens out. Would I do that? Wouldn't I just use one of the corner pieces? <gasps> oh, I know. What if I want something like this? Where it kind of comes out and then like, it's kind of like an L-shaped? Is that? No, because then I would just use a corner that I made. One of these guys right here. What am I trying to do? Am I trying to think 
What if I want one of these? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, right, that's what I need. I need something like that. It has like a line at the bottom, but also a corner piece like that. So. I don't want this structure. I want this one. I just need to figure out how the hell I'm going to get the corners in. Hold on. What if I make a new structure over here? I just use a, a new paint window for this. That way I can have... Uh, down here, the, the grid, tell me where stuff's at. So let's first of all grab this color. And we need to find... So this is going to be 0, 0. We want to find 32, 32. There's 32, 32. We want to do that. That's that corner. It has a thing there. Then I want to have one, two, three, one, two, three, corner right there for that one to have a, a nice little corner piece. Do I need, let's see, if I'm doing that, uh, I'm thinking if I need one that has like two corners up at the top, it would be for like, like that. If I had two corners, and then I can do like that and that. I would never need to do that. So just one corner is fine. And then down here, we're at 32 and 32 and 32 is. 68, so I would need, not 68, 64, I need 32 and 64, 65, yeah, I think that's what I would need, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. What a mess. Question, can I just like, one over, one more over, one more over, I said, thank you. I'm just going to copy, paste, and then not that. There, I think. That's sixty two, not even sixty four, yeah, so one. There? Well, that's just where my mouse position is. Yeah, there. That's what I want right down there, that number. Okay. 
Okay. Now that that's there, I can go one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, and then. No, because that's just another corner thing. So here is this one's corner. This one's done. This one's done. This one's done. That one's done. That one's done. That one's done. This one is just going to be a fucking void. You know what? Freaking really easy. Just get rid of the center. Right there. So did I get off and then let, let's delete that real quick. Is this 32 by 32? 31 by 31. That's 32 by 32. Is that 32 by 32? Right there? I did get off over there. Okay. means I want to grab that. Do that. Got I think. Yeah, I'm making another tile map. That should be 30 Two by thirty-two, right there. Okay. Color that in. That should be down to there then. So that's gonna be thirty-two by thirty-two, right there. Let's delete that. To make a line up here. There we go. How big is this area? By seven? Six, that's what we want, right? Four, why is that four? Damn it. Ugh. You know what? Screw this. Get out of here. I'll do it one square at a time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Corner. Okay. Now, I'm going to copy this, rotate it, copy that, rotate it again, copy that, rotate it one more time, there. Place that one there. And then I just leave that one. And it doesn't matter where I take this from as long as it's 32 by 32. It's all gonna be the same thing over that wall. Grab that. Okay. Now I'm going to make two of these, each of the corners, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Do that. And there are the corners. 
and paste, and I'm just gonna whoop. wait, what? Why is it moving the other ones too? The fuck over right now? Whatever. Copy. I'll just paste it. Do this. Copy this one. And spin it around. Put it in this corner. Okay. Although maybe I should do a square of these as well. Makes it so much easier. Oops. There we go. All right, and now we have a nice little corner of these, which I can have to place perfect here. Then we need one more grouping of 32 by 32. Copy. Peace. Okay. So that one was like that. So this one, I need to have the colors in the bottom left. that. Oops. Do I? No. Those are the up and downs. Look, I need left and right. There we go. Over here, we want this. Okay. Now I can grab this guy and copy, paste, paste, and then do that. I can just do this real quick. I don't even know if I'm going to use all these tiles, but Better than not having them. So we'll just make a nice little square out of these and everything will be good. There we go. All right, now I'm really tired of looking at all this white and blue and stuff. So let's get that is done. Okay. There we go. So now we have the corners with corner doodly bobs and we have the upper ones with corner doodly bobs and we have the other ones with other doodly bobs. Okay. Also, I should uh, resize the canvas and remove 32 from this, so it should be 320. There you go, perfect. Okay, and that's gonna be our new thing. Cool. I think this should work for us for now. Let's go ahead and save that. Ah, excellent, okay. Don't save that. All right. Let's once again copy this over. So assets. I'm gonna have to redo a couple things here, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and delete this first of all. That will get rid of all that. We'll bring in the new blocks, and we'll just have to edit them in this bright thing by size, it's gonna be 32 by 32 grid, slice them and dice them. There we go. Then I can go back to the tile palette. I can just drag this bad boy over here. We wanna make sure we're in slime experiments, uh, assets, tile maps, that, yes, overwrite. Oh, 
Well, maybe not like that. Okay, hold on. Go ahead and grab that and just delete those assets. We should get rid of that. Or not, I guess. Let me just erase all this nonsense. I'll just drag it in again. so frustrated to deal with sometimes. Let's try this again. Yes. Okay, here's the tile map now. Although I don't know why I made it wide instead of tall, because it's so much easier if it's tall in this fucking window. Uh, whatever. It's okay. Let's just make sure that all of our uh, things that use assets from this are... Uh, not that the prefabs um the open gate and the closed gate need to have their sprite updated this is open horizontal oh that's what i was going to do dag nam it we determined that the gates are a little bit uh wonky so we want to change that just a second Let's go ahead and just erase all of this stuff to start with. It won't let me erase that for some reason. Whatever. All right, back to editing the tile map once again. Sorry. At least I can make it vertical instead of horizontal here. Okay. Let's zoom it, baby. I can talk. So yeah, we want to basically remove these open things here. We don't need the open ones, we just care about the closed ones. Um, that's all. We want to get rid of these side things. But first, before I do that, I guess it doesn't matter here. I'm going to zoom closer in on this little area. Okay. I'm going to grab that. When we were trying to move our slime before, we were, we were running into the issue where it was getting stuck between these things. It didn't really have much space. So we're going to get rid of the side things and just have it be a gate gate, right? So I think, actually, if we make this a little bit bigger, We can do something like this. And then we can do this. Make that a little wider. Make that a little wider. And you know what? I'll just delete this horizontal gate here. So I'm just going to rotate this one anyway. Yeah, tile maps are kind of tricky to get. So I can kind of explain them a little bit here once I'm done with this. So let's also go ahead and just do this down to here. I don't want to do that. Also, I'm not going to be able to delete that little thing. Ah. OK. And then let's go ahead and grab this area and delete that. and. This area. Let's delete that. Now let's grab our gray color. We're just going to go down here. Make that nice and thick. Okay, then we just want to make our protrusions every so often here. Probably make them a bit thicker.
Like this? Yeah? Okay. Just to make the door more obvious, you know? There we go. Okay. So now I can grab this whole area. 32, copy, paste, and we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees and get it to slam into here. And those are going to be our new gates. Yay. And like I said, while we're at it, we want to do canvas size. We want to expand further downward. Let's go 320 here as well. Boop. I'm going to grab all this. Do that. Go ahead and grab these. Well, let's zoom it in a little bit further so I don't mess anything up. Maybe I do these. 95 by 95, crap. Oops, right there. 96 by 96, excellent. Grab that. We're gonna drag this down to here. Same to this one. One too far. There we go. That should be ninety. Ah, fuck, that was ninety-five. That's ninety-six by ninety-six. Yeah, but I'm missing the bottom pixel. Great. Nope. Too far now. Now we're too far to the right, it looks like. Damn it. Okay, I'm just gonna fucking zoom out of this. Screw this nonsense. There we go. There we go. That looks like it's perfect. Perfect, okay. Now I can cut it. Zoom out a bit. Paste it back. There we go. And in fact, what I might do here, let me grab this gate and I'll just put it next to the other thing. Go. And then I'm going to grab the exits. Last second my hand moved and cut it off. Grab those and put them here. And then let me boop boop boop. More down, there we go. I'll just grab these together. I'm gonna move them upward so they're touching there. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to grab all these and move them to the bottom. Oop. Boop, there we go. All right, and then we can come in here and just grab all of these together as well. And I can move them over as, as far as I can. Um, obviously it's going to get in the way of that thing there, so let's undo that, actually. Let's do the top two for right now. Easier to deal with. Okay. That cube in the middle. This guy right here. He's just ruining everything. Actually, will I ever need this? Will I ever need that? I think the answer is no. So actually, I can just come here, grab this one, cut it, paste it, and just overlay it over this. Easy. Ugh. Now I just resize it so that the uh, canvas fits nicely. So 
we want to do 320 minus 32 is going to be the height of 288. Let's just make sure that looks good. Okay, perfect. And then I think we have two, maybe three there. So we're going to resize it again to get rid of the stuff on the right. So 320 minus 64, we'll start with that one for now. 256, and hit OK. One more row. Okay, that's fine. Minus 32 is going to give us... 224. There we go. All right, so this is our new updated tile map. Save it again. Close out of that. We'll go ahead and in our assets, drag it on over. Then we need to cut it again. single and it should be multiple okay now we can slice it up by size by 32 slice mm -mm -mm. all right and now we can take this i'm gonna move it over here just so it's out of the way it's already opening up in tile maps that's perfect okay i'll zoom out of this Grab that, hit that, and then I can... Oh, I have to hit edit. That's why it wouldn't work before. There we go. Okay. Our new tile map is completed. So let me explain tile maps a bit for uh, those of you who might not understand what they are. Because I don't think I ever explained it in the videos. Um, but now that we're actually building levels, it's sort of important to know. So tile maps are essentially like... Think of them as prefabs. Like the, the objects we've been making here that we can kind of drag out and place on the thing. Except they're background tiles. Or like uh, tiles that make up the scenery, right? Um, it might be easier to show you, rather than just amorphous blobs, to show you the artwork for the tile sets that I've had on other things. So let's look at the Dark Forest tile set here. So this is a tile set that I had made for my I'm Just a Slime game. As you can see, it's, it's got some squares, it's got a bunch of different flowers, rocks, has a couple of trees, you know, has uh, some water, some corners and stuff, all this different stuff. And so what your tile map is, is essentially your background, like I said. And you want it to be basically the same, like, size per item. These are all 32 by 32, except for the trees, which would be harder to do. So they're, uh, I think, like 64 by 96 or something like that. But essentially what this lets you do is you can just like take a square and paint over it, right? You don't have to like drag one item over, one item over, one item over every single time. I mean, you could do that. Um, it would just be a total mess. So what the tile map allows you to do is keep things kind of concise, right? Um, first of all, I should delete the tiles that are currently here. Can I, can I get rid of those for some reason? Why can't I delete the uh, things that are there? Let's... Let's delete level 1-1. One, one. We'll bring out our prefab level here. And we will unpack it. Okay, now we don't have those obnoxious tiles that were there before that were potentially going to cause issues. So yeah, the tile map, it's, like I said, different squares and you can use for different things. So if I wanted to take this and I just wanted to paint over a background of it, I can just have the whole background be blue now. Um, if I want, I can add some other things here and there. And if we hit play, you can see how that stuff looked. Well, the loading screen came up, but don't worry about that. So essentially think of it like detailed paint, right? Like uh, Microsoft Paint. These are your colors, essentially, and this is your canvas, right? So 
let's say I want this color, air quotes, and I just want to paint over it like this, whatever. That's how it works. So you can kind of think of a tile as a pixel and the area you're drawing in as the canvas. So you can kind of do whatever you want there. Um, it allows you to easily make backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm probably explaining this horribly and just saying the same thing over and over again, but yeah. Essentially what you're doing is you are taking a static picture that is just a bunch of squares and stuff like like this. This is just one picture. Um, there's no like nothing special about it right now. And you're taking that and in the sprite editor, you're editing the sprite so each one of these is an individual item instead of one huge picture. And if I wanted to, I could like delete these and like make this one huge object. But I did not want to do that. So uh yeah. That's essentially how it works. And that way you can just easily drag stuff over to like add a background and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and in our prefabs we need to update our stuff. So let us do that. So this is the prefab closed gate vertical which is up and down I think we need this sprite no this sprite and then yeah that's fine okay I will have to change the hitboxes for these, so fine. And then for the closed gate, vertical, I want to grab this guy and place him there. And then what other prefabs did we have that had stuff? The open gates and the pitfall, which the pitfall should do. We just have that one. Uh, okay, and then I'm also probably going to have to Go prefab. Open up the pitfall. It's missing the vertical and horizontal sprites here. That is indeed correct. Okay. Use this one. So this one. And save that now. Okay. Any other prefabs that were missing their thing, except for those, which obviously I'm going to have to figure out what the hell I'm doing with. Let's open up a closed gate, and we're going to have to adjust the uh, hitbox on these a little more. Go. Save. And open, and since we made the limb a little wider, so they're a little easier to see. There we go, save. So, we have all that done. Do I need the open and closed gate? I don't think I do, since we eliminated the walls that were from them. I think I can actually just get rid of these. Which means, do I, in the uh, lover script, that's the level. Why do I have things that look the same? I think I closed them. I'm going to close out of the, uh, the save scripts. I don't think I need those anymore. The main menu script, I think we're done with, right? We're done with it for now. The finished level script. I think we're done with. Let me just go ahead and put that there. I think we're done with this guy, yeah. 
Nothing else would really change in here. The pause menu manager. Let me just reset level. We just call the reset level. Fine, we can get rid of that one. The red slime script. Yeah, we can get rid of that one too. For now, I, I really haven't tested it resetting the level as the player gets hit by it, so we should test that out. Let's write that down. Not bad. <clears throat> Test red slime touching player to reset level. Okay. So, player move, I don't think we have anything left to do with that. That's pretty straightforward. Conveyor belt script, again, nothing we need to add. I do want to change the lever script around a bit and potentially level reset. Maybe the pressure plate as well. So, since we don't have a door, like we don't have an open-closed thing anymore, I don't think we necessarily need the object to change to. We just need to change the original. Yeah? So if I just rename this object to change, and I remove object to change to, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, then when we activate it, we want to do to change to true. Is false, right? Because if it's activated, it's going to turn it off, which means it's going to turn that one back on. That's all we have to do for that. For the pressure plate, we just want to do the same thing. So let's just change this object to change, remove the original object, and for resetting the pressure plate, this needs to be true. Care about the movable block. We just care about these things. So, object to change needs to be false. Object to change needs to be true here. Okay. That just kind of simplifies things. Okay, so now that that is done, and we have everything caught up in terms of that, let's just double check. Good. What is this? What, what, what is this? Oh, that's level tile now. I, I can delete this prefab. I have two level prefabs. One is actually called level prefab, so we'll keep that one. All right. So now we just want to make our level. And like I said, we want to keep it pretty simple. So we're going to do what I kind of started to do before. I'm starting with this guy. Go ahead. Oops, not, not that one. This one. Here. This one goes up here. It goes over on this side. This one goes over on that side. Just to make sure those are all on the correct map. Okay. If you select something and it's not one of the tile maps, sometimes it causes issues, but we're, we're fine. All right. Next. Oh, that's why I had the corner pieces that didn't have anything else on them. It was for these corners. Whatever. 
just use these. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Also, fuck, I already realized one that I forgot, and that is just a tunnel piece for like a, a one by one thing. Anyway. I'm not going to make another hmm, tile map. I am, however. I'm not going to edit that tile map. I'm just going to make a fucking new one. I'm tired of having to constantly go in here and do this shit. So we're going to just grab this guy. Copy. New. Um, let's make this 96 by 96. One more thing for the tile map, and then we'll be done with them, I swear. I swear, man, I swear! Okay. So, we just need to make a tunnel, and then one more thing, and we'll be done. Okay, that's one piece, and we just want to make one for going vertically. Okay, now I want some freaking corners. I'm going to move this up here, actually, just so we can... Uh, this without causing issues. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we're done. Image. Nice canvas. That way. Uh, 64? File. Save as. All. Blocks 2. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't freaking want to do anything else. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy this in here and real quickly make a tile map out of it. And we'll just add the tile map to that too. Multiple, 32, apply, sprite editor, slice, 32 to 32, slice it, apply it, do that, open up the tile map, throw this over to here, bam, we're done, okay, we're done tile maps. Until I realize there's something else that I wanted to add that I forgot about. <laughs> Is he joking or not? I can't tell. Okay. Let's finish these little things. Oops. Not what I wanted. That one. Why is... This thing. Bloop, bloop. 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 Apparently, there is something in the foreground. Go. Honestly, the tile map collider should be foreground one. So we'll do that. Okay. So now we have a nice square field here with really nothing to deal with. Um, my question is. Do I want to make the color something different for the background? 
Or do we want to just leave the background color blue all the time? Setting that aside. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, me. I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to add a way to leave right there. Then I'm going to add one of these here, one of these here, and we want the tunnels to go up and down, like that, like that. Hey, I noticed something else my tile map could use now. One of those things that goes just one there and one there for the corners. But you know what? Never mind. I don't care. We're not dealing with that. So this is going to be our first level. Or not. No. I was thinking about putting a block here, but I think that's going to be level two. Level two is when we learn to push blocks. Level one, I'm just going to have kind of like a little bit of a labyrinth kind of thing going on. where the uh, player just needs to navigate through it. Simple as that. Just so they can kind of get used to there being walls, I guess. Mm. kind of come out of here and we'll go down over to here and then we'll do another curve this way over to here and then cap it off with that so that's going to be our first level as you can see it, it's not really anything special it's just going to be get to the end and it's going to take time to get to the end so that way the person uh, the doctor has time to talk. Okay. So we also need to set the spawn point, which uh, starts off in the middle. So we're going to start them off up here. And the end level, we want to move over to here so that they can hit this and end the level. We want to drag the current level to the end level. Next level is not done yet, but we just want to set level 1 equal to that. This is going to be 1-1 one -one for the level name, level number 1. And nothing else here really matters because we're not going to be doing anything else if he gets reset, so none of that matters. So we have our spawn point, our excellent level. We just need to make another level before we can set that. It's a thing. Okay, so let's open up our prefabs folder and create a new folder inside the prefab folder called levels. Okay. Also, I forgot, where were we going to do the auto, auto talking? Was that going to be in here? Now that I'm thinking about it, in the GUI, I have the text box and the dialog thing. I might add a tag called text box and dialog text. And that way, wait, no, I can't do that. Can you? 
We'll figure it out. I don't remember if you can find something that has a tag if it's inactive. Which is what would happen if it was inactive, right? So let, let's open up auto-talking real quick. And we're just going to have it have two messages that says, Hello, can you see this? Question mark. That's all that's going to happen. Um, auto-talking. So instead of having that there, I think let's remove these serialized fields for now. Honestly, if it doesn't work, I just want to make this easy as possible, so we're going to do that. Then I'll remove the serialized fields. So that way I can just uncomment and delete stuff. I don't have to worry about anything else. So. After it wakes up, we want to do dialogue equals game object dot find game object with tag dialogue txt dot get component text control GUI. And then for the Text box equals game object, find game object with tag. Text box. The text box doesn't have anything else component to it, it's just a game object, that's fine. But I think with that code, we should be able to set that up. We'll see. Without having to do anything else. So let's just. Well, I can't hit play now, can I? Because if I do, it's just going to get stuck in loading, isn't it? Well, it's not. Okay. So we've got an error. And as I thought, it is saying that this object is not a referenced object. So unfortunately, we cannot do that, which means we're going to have to create our own canvas for every level. That's fine. So real quick, let's just revert this back. Save. Just back, 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 back. Oh, my God, here. <clears throat> the boop, and then we'll remove these. Save. Okay. So let's do something really simple. We're going to copy GUI, paste it here attach it to the level, and I'm just going to rename this to level GUI, and we're going to decrease the amount of bars that it has surrounding it. That way we're knowing that it's it's not that important. Okay. Um, we want the canvas to still be there. We don't care about the timer, the pause menu, or the loading panel. We just care about the text box and the dialog panel. So, we will be taking the text box and dragging it down to here, and the dialogue and taking it down to here. Okay. So that should be all we have to do in order to get it to talk now. So let's hit play. We spawn in. Wait a couple seconds, it says hello. A couple more seconds. It's gonna say, can you see this? Okay. Let's, let's try that again. Let's see how far we can get before it ticks. Okay. Hello. Can you see this? Okay, so we get about halfway through the level by the time that happens. So we might want to set auto talking instead of four to be three seconds. And let's start talking after one second. See how that looks. All about making little tweaks as you're doing stuff. Okay, so we spawn in. Hello. Can you see this? Okay. That's what'll happen there. Okay, so to finish this level off, we basically want to um do his dialogue, right? So 
Uh, what do we what do we want to start out by having him say? Finally awake, little slime. Welcome to my laboratory. Let's say lab, shorten it. We don't want to have a huge amount of text the player has to read, right? Welcome to my lab. I research slimes. See? And you, you are my next Research subject. Start by getting to the end of this simple maze. Now, there's going to be two kinds of players. There's going to be the players who don't care about the dialogue that's happening and just go through the level. And there's going to be the people who stop, don't do anything, and who are going to listen to the level, uh, to the dialogue that happens. So, regardless, whenever they hit the exit, um, they're going to stop talking. So it doesn't matter, right? We also have to see how much text we can fit before it uh, happens. So let's go, let's add a third dialogue box and say, the exit of each room is marked with a red arrow. You need to reach that point. Okay, so that should be all I have to do there. Let's see what happens. Find a little quick little slime. Welcome to my lab. I research slime, as you see. Now it's going a little bit too fast. We're going to the end of the maze. Yeah, it's going too fast. Even I can't read it and I know what's being said. So let's switch it to four seconds. and see how that works. So you finally awake, little slime. Welcome to my lab. I research slimes, you see. You are my next research subject. Start by getting to the end of this simple maze. The exit of the room is marked with a red arrow. You need to reach that point. Just barely enough time. I may want to increase it to five seconds. Now, at five seconds, we'll definitely have reached the end of the first level before this happens, but maybe the player doesn't see the red arrow. And so we'll give them a hint here. So finally awake, little slime, welcome to my lab. I research slimes, you see. Go on my next research subject. Start by getting to the end of this simple maze. The exit of each room is marked with a red arrow. You need to reach that point. So I think five seconds is good for the amount of dialogue we have here. We just want to make sure we don't go too overboard with the dialogue per line. Okay, so I think that's level one completed. Yay! Very simple. It's the tutorial level, what do you want? Right. So we're going to take this level prefab thing here, and we want to rename it to level 1-1. And then we're going to go ahead and just drag this down to levels and make it a prefab. Now. We can delete it. Okay. Next, we're gonna go back to prefabs and take our next level prefab out here. And now is when things get a little bit different. We're gonna start introducing some new mechanics and stuff like that. This is gonna be level number two. So we're gonna call this uh, level, what did I call the first level? 1-2, hold on. I want to name this one? I just called it 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck. I didn't put the GUI in the prefab. Hold on. 1-2 for the level. Okay. Let me do that real quick. First of all, unpack the prefab. I'm going to open up this level here. I'm going to copy this. Then open up prefabs, go to the level prefab. And if I hit paste, I should just be able to paste that in there and save this. So easy peasy. And then also in this one, just hit paste there. And 
There we go. Okay. Now we have our text box and our dialogue. Easy. Okay. This level is going to be level dash two. We got that in there. End level. Uh, level number is two. Current level we want to grab over here. Next level doesn't matter right now. So we're not going to worry about that. Okay. So let's start with the tile map. So a lot of them are going to have the same base like elements, right? We're going to have a outer wall that the player just cannot pass through because we do not want them to. And then we will grab the corner pieces. Ooh, what's free on the Epic Game Store today? Well, I will check that later. Let's get out of my way first. Okay. Now we're in the nitty gritty of it. So, let's grab this. We'll just plop it down there. Doesn't really matter where the end is for this level. So this one, it's gonna be very simple. We're going to make a little chasm the player needs to get through to reach the exit. Simple, right? But here comes the first curveball, everybody. We're going to add a movable block right there. Oh. Ooh, will he be able to get through? Who knows? Will he push the block against the exit and then not be able to make it through because he's an idiot? We'll find out. So, movable block. We want to add to... You know what I should do? In the level prefabs, I'm going to add another empty object called uh, items. Let's just put that up here. And we'll save this, which then should show up Oh, right. this one's not a... It's not a prefab anymore. All right, so we can do that there, and we can just toss that in there. That way, all of the things that we have can be sorted into the, the items that we use. So he'll be moving, scooching around, doing his thing, whatever. We want to add another auto talk here. Let's make five lines just for the heck of it. Right now, we can shorten it later. Add the text box. Add the dialog box. And you know what? Open up level prefab. Open up auto talk. I don't want to have to drag these over all the time. We're just going to do that. And uh, now I no longer have to drag those over every single time. I can just type. So we're perfect. All right. So we have our first obstacle. Let's set the spawn point. We're going to have him spawn over here. The end level needs to be over here. So we can end the level, obviously. Okay. Next, in here. Good. You can follow instructions. Let's see how you do with. How do you spell obstacles? Obvious. Oh, that's not how I spell it at all. Toss that over there. Um, obstacle. Why does it make an I sound? There's no I in the damn word. Okay. Let's see how we are with obstacles. Sometimes you will need to move them out of your way. I think you'll figure it out. And then, oh, but be careful. 
you won't be able to move them away from a wall if you push you push it against one okay so we'll do that I hope that makes sense. You won't be able to get it away from a wall if you push it against this. Like, you can't pull the block, you can only push them. You won't be able to... Let's say pull them away. That makes a little more sense, rather than move. Because you can still move them along the wall, you just can't move them away from the wall. Okay, okay. I think that makes sense. Let's play test the level. We spawn in. Good, you can follow instructions. Let's see how you do with obstacles. Move this out of the way. Sometimes you need to move them out of your way. I think you can figure it out. Oh, but be careful. You won't be able to pull them away from a wall, but you get it. So I already know how to end the level, but I just want to see if you push the block against the wall. Okay, so you can't just take the block and push it against the wall and still trigger the ending there. So that's simple. Okay, another easy level. Heck yeah, let's go. Uh, move this down two levels, and it's now completed. Now let's delete that. Now that we have level one, one, and one, two completed, we can take level one, one, and open it up. Quick end level, so we can drag the next level, level one, two, into that prefab slot. That way we can create the level and whatnot. Lovely, don't you think? Okay. So now let's test to make sure that we're able to go between worlds. Also, I think it'll trigger saving if it happens as well, too, so... A good thing we can test. Easy peasy, baby. Easy peasy. So, loading. And we're at world 1-2. One, Excellent. That actually worked out really well. It did give me an error that said on trigger enter 2D gave me an error. What error exactly was it? In here, the GM is loading equals true. But it says object reference not set to an instance of the object. Well, that doesn't make any sense. It did show loading. Oh. Do you know what happened? Because I was I started in the same spot when the level loaded. Before I got moved, I triggered the next level script. Oh, that's a good thing to learn right now before all the entrances are at the same place and you can literally just stand on one and constantly go through them. Okay, what we'll do just real quick here, um, let's make a new boolean. A private bool has triggered equals false. And then what we'll do is we'll do a if has triggered equals false. We'll do this. And we want to do has triggered equals true. So basically what will happen is once you trigger the finished level script, it's only going to happen once. You cannot do it multiple times, right? We don't want that to happen. But that's not going to fix our issue of spawning at the location that the uh, exit is at. Not great. We're going to have to think about that for a moment. Hmm.
I could make it so the timer has to get to a certain value. Hey, Mellow Echo, how you doing? Because like, there's no way you're gonna finish a level in like a few seconds, right? Let, let's just hit, um, let's hit play. Let's see how fast it takes me to get through this maze, first of all. I think even if I were to just hold D without any of these obstacles, it would take me about five seconds, maybe, to get from here to here, right? But there shouldn't be any five second levels in my game, right? So what we can do is also check if it has triggered as false and Let me open up the timer script. The return time is going to be... It returns a string, yeah? Yeah, it returns a string. Okay, here's what I can do. We want to check, before we trigger this, we want to do if timer.return time oops actually instead of return time let's just make a new variable public boolean has five sec Past. Return true. Okay, so if we want to do seconds is greater than or equal to 5.0, we want to return true. Otherwise, we want to return false. Easy. So that way we can just check that value. If it's true, we can let them finish the level. If it's not true, so we'll just do has five seconds passed equals true. We'll go in there and actually end the level. Okay. Also, that sets a minimum speed you can beat the entire game at. If it's 50 levels, that is 50 seconds each. That is 120 or 250 seconds, which would be like four minutes or something. So if you managed to somehow find a glitch in the game that would allow you to get to the entrance immediately, you would still have to wait for those five seconds, which means the fastest possible game time you can ever have beating this game would be like four minutes and some odd seconds. Cool. Okay. Be that speedrunners, you're hard coded to have a specific limit to how quickly you can beat a game. Okay. So now that that's like that, I think we can test this again. And hopefully we won't have the same error pop up that GM dot is loaded is true is not able to be triggered or something. Something weird like that. Okay, so we got another null reference. And, okay. I know what's happening. Hey. Hey, uh. You know how, uh. Before we check to see any of these values are assigned. We wait for 0 0.01 seconds. This happens immediately. So we need a, uh, another Boolean. Um, so private bool has awoken equals false. And we can do down here has awoken equals true. And then down here, on has triggered, 
and has awoken equals true. You know what? No. If has awoken equals true. I'll just copy all this and put it in here. The ultimate nesting! Now, I know there's some programmers out there who do not like nesting. And uh, screw y'all. Nesting is great. But I can understand if you get to like way over here with nesting. But this, this is fine. There's some people who don't even like one to two levels of nesting. They're just like, one if statement, that's all. You don't get to put another if statement in another if statement, or put a, a four in an if statement. But I think what they would do is they would have a if else, and they would have like an else return. That way it would just, it would just stop the script from running. I think that's how it would work. And then they would have like the rest of this if stuff down here. But, like they would have all that down there. Or I guess even better, it would be if has awoken does not equal true. It would have return. It basically just like has one line, one if statement for nest thing. It's stupid. It's dumb. Sometimes it can help out if like you're doing like huge for loops and stuff when it like actually takes computational power, but like just an if statement is barely anything. Okay, let's see now if our theory is correct. And that was causing the issue. Meow. Didn't get an error. Perfect. That was the problem. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our first two levels are done. They are completed. And that's great. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to remove the level space. We're gonna open up the main menu. And I need to do something. What do I need to do? I need to put a level somewhere. Where do I put this level? Not there. No. No. Game World Manager. Here. Level one. Level two. Let's make a note of that so I don't forget. <clears throat> For every new level, it's prefab. It needs added into game world managers levels list. Okay. Game world scene, game world, world manager, game world manager script. There. Now I don't go like, what am I doing? I'm dumb. Okay. Not to scare of that. Let's just hit save. We're going to select this main camera. Okay, that's fine. Unload that scene. This scene stays. And we hit play. We have an error. 
in Save Manager, I didn't like this line. Why? It says object reference is not a thing. Okay. So. What does that mean? Why? Hmm. Hmm. It seems like it should work. Let's take a moment. I'm going to get up and stretch a bit and think about this. And then we'll come back and resolve the issue. Be right back. I'm back. Are y'all stretched and limbered up? Good. Now, there's a couple of reasons why this could happen. Let's first of all get our code over here so we can kind of see what's going on. <clears throat> first of all, let's look at exactly what's happening. So it's going here to this line, bottom left. <coughs> it is going. We have an error here. Okay. In save manager, load data at line 26. The main menu script, load the data at line 73. So if I open up that, I think if I just click on that, it opens. It did. So this line here caused issues, which is make, which makes sense since we're having an issue with the line 26 up above. Um, and the main menu 68 is also giving an issue, which, what? Which is also start coroutine load the data. 
Makes sense. Okay. So our issue lies with this line of code here. There's a couple of things that it could be. Uh, perhaps this we're not able to find on the clock, which could make sense. So let's hit GM. And as you can see, we didn't add it here. It's there now. So that was the issue. Although we have to do re-add it again since we were in the middle of the game. Wait, let's clear that error, hit play, and see if it loads this time or not. Okay, it loaded, no errors. It gave us a continue button. Let's hit continue, see what happens. Hey, loaded us into the uh, thing here, which makes sense. If we look at the GM, let's hit pause. We can say the current level is 1-1, one, one, next level is 1-2, highest level is 1. I think that might be an issue. Let me see here. So the finished level script has a level number. And this level number is used for... The high scores. Okay. That's fine. But maybe... Maybe it's the continue button that's having an issue. Let's see. Continue button, continue button. Continue game. We want to do start co team, start game. World single. Okay. It would be the game world manager then that is choosing to... Continuing at highest level, which would zero. Hey, event tracker, what's the highest level? Zero. Hmm. So it put us a level behind because of this, which makes sense. But maybe we don't need this. Negative one. Levels. We can ice level. Zero, one. Right. Right. Because highest level zero is level zero, which is level one. Right, so we don't need the negative one there, I don't think. Okay. So now, if we try this again, and we're going to be trying this, like, multiple times throughout the, the game, like, rebirth and stuff. Um, here we can see we have the, the high score for that we can hit continue and it should go to to this level now excellent okay now i just want to see what happens when we hit new game to make sure the new game button works new game why did it take me here this is not the first level so Build the first level. Oh. And it's searching if highest level is zero. It's going to start the first level. So maybe what I want to do instead, when we load... Where's the load game at? Load the data. If et dot highest level. Actually, I don't need to do this. This should just be zero. 
and then want to we want to hide the new game button basically new game button it's out of here nah we don't want it we want to only have i'm going to show you what i'm doing sorry um the new game button should only show up the first time that you click it So then, down here, the new game button dot set active false. Because if there's any data, I mean, uh, if you hit continue, it's fine. But if you hit the new game, we're just gonna hide the new game button. Screw it. I'm fine with that. So new game button. Here you go. And we hit save. And we hit this. So the reason why. We uh, can't get a new game to start is because we have a save game because we saved. Which means I have to find where the hell my save game data goes. Um, down here, up here. Um, blah. So I think it gets saved in the same directory as everything else does. So slime experiments. Um, is it assets? No, it's not assets. It's not here. Where is the, where's the save game at? It is documents my games? No. I've been there before with my other games because I've had to look at stuff. Wait, oh, I know where it's at. It's a uh, Oh, this is going to be different because I haven't named it yet. Okay. Um, we want to go to C. Program data. Maybe. Is it program data or program file? Program files. Check here, Unity, Unity Hub, Unity Editor. No. Dang, no. No, not there. Man, this is a hunt. Gosh, I just want to delete my save files, please. Do I have a desktop icon for it? No, I thought I would. Assets. Edit. Project settings. Um. Is there a save thing here? Okay, fine. You know what? We'll do this the easy way. Second. Me, 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 me. We want to, in here, grab this persistent path nonsense. And a debug dot log persistent path that way i can figure out where it's saving stuff to we'll save that 
Actually, since I changed the company name, it might have changed, I think. We'll find out. Anyway, I'm not going to show you guys that. Just in case it shows something sketchy. Since it is my computer. Oh, clever girl. Yep, changing that thing to flag. Um, apparently changed the persistent path. So, let me change where the debug shows up at. Okay. Yep. That's where it is. Okay. Let me just undo that. Let me find that real quick. So it's in your app data, which, yeah, good luck getting to that by navigating and not looking. So it's in app data, um, local low, and then my name that I named it, which is going to be Plag this time around, but uh, there's not going to be anything in there quite yet. The other name that we had was Default Company. We're going to delete the Default Company name here. And wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. We can go back to the monitor. Okay. Now, let's get rid of the debug paths that I typed out there. Save. Do 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 all right, now if I hit this, we should see new game stays there. I can hit new game, and it loads me to the first level. Yay! Woo! <laughs> okay, that's enough. Excellent. So, ladies and gentlemen, girls, we have made some progress today. We're going to wrap things up. First, yes, we made some levels. But we still need to keep that one there because we still have 48 more to make. Indeed we do. Or more. Who knows? Who can say? Uh, we created our our saves. So now we can save and load. We uh, typed out all the other stuff that we had that in the beginning needed to be typed out. All the different uh, high scores and all that good jazz. We Reworked our uh, tile maps a couple of times, which was just grand old deity it was. Um, but yeah, so that'll be all for today. Next week, because I take Wednesday, not Wednesday, I take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Because um, who wouldn't like a three-day weekend? And I'm my own boss right now, even though I'm not making any money. Um, so I'm taking these days off, and then we'll reconvene, reconvene on Monday, when we will continue to create levels and progress forward. So, that's the plan, anyway. Now let's go ahead and go over here and here. We'll cut the music. So, everyone, I've been thinking about some things here, right? And I'm wondering if maybe I should create a Patreon for this stuff, since I'm making games. That way, even though I'm not making money now, I can have a way to make some money while I'm making games. And if I get enough money, I can actually buy better assets than what I'm currently making myself. Because I'm not an artist, let's face it, right? I, I can't make wonderful things like we uh, had seen previously with our previous games. and. Honestly, I'm running a little low on money, so I don't want to commission a bunch of artwork if I don't have to, right? And in addition to that, I think if I do make a Patreon, I would have it so that people who are on the Patreon can get early access builds. So like today, for example, I could create a build of level one and two, and I could create a, a zip file of that and then send it to y'all. And you could uh, play through the first two levels, which granted is not much, but I mean, that's kind of how it is for now. And then as I add more levels and whatnot, you'd be able to, you know, play those like every day that I finish some more levels or whatnot, as long as the game ran, I 
get uploaded there. And not only that, but you guys could tell me if there's any bugs or stuff that's happening that I'm not aware of. Because the, the tricky thing is with uh, developing in Unity, sometimes in the Unity uh, game mode, like what we were, like, <clears throat> like what we've been playing in currently, uh, you won't always catch bugs. Sometimes Unity's editor is just like, we'll just ignore that and make it look like it's working. But then when you get the game uh, like built and you try to play it without Unity, like engine being there, um, well, the engine's still there. It's just without the editor. Um, the game starts to fall apart. And it's like, no. Uh, for example, in my first game, the Slime Evolution one that I made, the game would not even start. But it would work just fine and start just fine in Unity's editor. But when I built the game, it would not start. So that was a huge issue um, that I had to figure out. Why is it doing this? And required me to like build the game dozens of times, test it out, still not working, go back to scratch and all that good jazz, right? So I think it would be neat to be able to have you guys test the game out a little bit beforehand and all that good jazz. And in the credits, I could also include all of the Patreons who have been supporting it from that time. Um, Maybe make a Patreon tier where it's like you get the game for free. After you do that, I don't know if you can do that on Patreon. Can you do that on Patreon? I don't know. But uh, I can do like the, the builds that we have. Or like rewards for being Patreons. And, you know, at certain events, like if I'm done with this one, for example, like when I do beat this, I beat it. When I complete this game... Maybe I can have a poll to be like, what game do I start next? And give you guys some options of games that I want to do. But uh, I don't know. Making really complex games like RPGs or other things where you're going to have like a lot of different visual effects. Like for an RPG, you need monsters and you need attacks effects and you need like backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, those get expensive, right? Especially if you get really good quality ones and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it would kind of depend upon the level of support I would get on Patreon. I don't know. Let me know what you all think, whether it's on Twitch, you can say, hey, yeah, I'd be a Patreon thing, or in the YouTube, if you would like to do so, um, feel free to mention that. Next stream, I'll talk about the Patreon stuff up front, to ask about it, because I know not everyone's going to want to stick around and watch a four, almost five hour video to hear about it at the end. So I'll say it in the beginning, throw out some feelers, and then people next time can be like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'd support that. And if there's like people who want to support it, I would make a Patreon and go from there. But uh, for now, I'm not going to make one. If there's going to be no one interested, right? Why bother putting in the work if no one's interested? But yeah, we made some good progress today. And I think it's going to be relatively smooth sailing for now, as long as I can think up new puzzles to create and not get writer's block, kind of. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Anyway, everyone, thank you all for watching, hanging out, all that good jazz. Um, video's going to be up on YouTube here later today. And you can catch me on Twitch Monday through Thursdays uh, around... I don't know, it depends. Paul and I decide to get up out of bed and start streaming. So just follow me on Twitch if you want to get alerted. That's all. Bye-bye.